Hello again everyone. This is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and today I'll be describing the exercise routine that helped the 1950 Mr. America John Farbotnik build his champion level chest. I'm not totally sure what it is about this era, but I find the Silver Era side chest pose to be far superior to any other era of bodybuilding. Perhaps it is the barrel rib cage, or maybe the presentation of the pose itself. Regardless, the side chest pose at this time could be an absolute showstopper if performed correctly. Along with the front double bicep shot, these two poses were perhaps the most important when in competition. Today we will discuss how to increase the circumference of your chest using a combination of both chest specific exercises as well as old school breathing movements. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this particular exercise routine, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with all that out of the way, I hope you all enjoy this video. For those of you curious, this program can be found in the September 1950 edition of Strength and Health magazine. In it, Mr. America John Farbotnik details the training routine he used to expand his ribcage from a rather measly 37 inches to a whopping 50 inches by 1950. He describes how a well-built chest is hard to conceal, even in modest clothing, and is thus always impressive to the observer. First and foremost, the key to developing a barrel chest is to broaden and deepen the rib cage itself. This is fundamentally more important than the pectoralis muscles, especially during the drug-free age of bodybuilding, in which we are discussing. He then goes on to describe how the Olympic swimmer Johnny Weismuller greatly improved his chest shape and size as a result of his athletic endeavors. This was not so much a result of muscular growth necessarily, rather it was a result of controlled deep breathing, which caused his ribcage to expand over the years. As his aerobic conditioning improved, so then did his chest. Because of this, Mr. Farbotnik endorsed exercises that superficially resembled swimming strokes, both in form and function. The flexibility of using dumbbells, as far as adjusting the weight, makes them a far superior resistance medium to something like water which is far less variable. In general, this program revolves around the idea of supersetting a chest exercise with a breathing exercise. This will allow you to put both strain on the pecs and practice deep breathing, which will broaden the rib cage over time. Now I will discuss the routine in a little more detail. As with just about all of the training routines from back in the day, this routine is completely flexible and can be changed depending on the user and what feels right for them. For the sake of the second exercise block, I left out a preceding breathing exercise because he does not mention it in the literature. I'm not sure why, but if you wanted to, you could precede the dumbbell supine press with something like the barbell pullover, which stimulates breathing. So for the sake of that, you could do the barbell pullover followed by the dumbbell supine press for three sets of 10 reps back and forth. But I will not be doing that because I tried to follow the literature as strictly as possible. So the first training block here is the deep knee bend followed by the flying motion. Now that is what he called it, but we would know it now as the around the world for three sets of 10 reps in a superset fashion going back and forth. The next training block will be the dumbbell supine press for three sets of 10 reps. Feel free to add in a preceding breathing exercise of your choice. The third block will be the breathing squat and dumbbell pullover. It is about time that I discuss this exercise set and I finally get an excuse to do it here. And it's a long time coming and I really do apologize for not cov covering it sooner, but it really works in well here. And you will be doing that for three sets of 15 reps. So this is not the 20 rep breathing squat. It is the 15 rep breathing squat. And I'll show you what that's about. And the fourth block, the final block, will be the deadlift and the side flying motion. We would know this now as the pec fly for three sets of 12 reps. Now I would like to specify that some of these exercises, you might know about them already, like the dumbbell pullover and the dumbbell supine press, but they are not really performed in the way we perform them nowadays, especially the dumbbell supine press. There are a number of differences that some people might be a little skeptical about, but they really do feel good. So we will discuss those in detail now. The deep knee bend. This is one of those exercises you see in the magazines 
constantly from this era. It can be performed with no weight, and the idea is your upper body needs to be perpendicular with the floor at all times. So straight up and down, you are squatting all the way down, that is your, the back of your hamstring to your calf, all the way down, and you are lifting up on the balls of your feet. This needs to be performed relatively slow, extremely controlled, and you don't want to bounce off your calves at the bottom to propel yourself back up. You want to take a half second pause to a second pause and then squat back up. This is a really great exercise if you're limited on equipment and it works very well in this routine. The idea with the breathing is you will take your breath on the way down and expel slowly going up. And that's the idea and you will perform this to stimulate breathing before moving on to the chest specific exercise. The flying motion, aka the around the world, is a really fantastic exercise for the chest that you never see being performed anymore. A couple years back there was sort of a movement to revive this exercise but it has since died down and that's a real shame because this is a fantastic chest exercise. The hardest part for me was finding enough room to actually get my arms to make this circle because I really I have a lot of furniture and I couldn't really find the space, but I ended up making it work. Now the thing about it is you want to bring your arms so that they end up being parallel with the rest of your body, in line with the rest of your body. You don't want your arms to be too high because that will limit the actual amount of stretch you're putting on the pecs, and you don't want them too low because that increases the risk of injury. So you want them in line with the rest of your body, if possible. Now, another thing that you may notice is that I am not turning the bells in any way. I'm keeping them as they are, touching my thighs and bringing them all the way up, and I'm not rotating my hands at any point. There are other variations where you will rotate your hands so that your palms will actually face your thighs at the bottom most portion, but you're not trying to do that here. And beyond that, it's a really fantastic old school exercise and a great complement to the deep knee bend. Ah yes, the dumbbell supine press. Everybody knows about the dumbbell bench press, but you should notice that the dumbbells are ending up near my ears. Now, if you remember, I have done a video, well, a number of videos now on the various versions of the neck press. This is practically a Vince Gironda neck press with dumbbells done in the 1940s slash 50s. And that's really cool. That shows that there was a lot of inspiration that Vince Gironda had. Of course, he was a bodybuilder at this time as well in the 1940s and 50s competitively. And it shows he took a lot of inspiration from this variation and other variations like it of the presses from the time. And the whole idea with this is in some ways it combines the stretch of a fly with the strength aspect of a press. One thing that is important for this routine is the breathing. So you will be taking deep breaths here and you will want to hit almost like a pseudo vacuum at the bottom and really kind of take that breath in and suck it up to your chest. That is specifically very important here because you're not doing a breathing stimulating exercise prior to this. Now, if you are, I would still keep that in mind and I would still try to perform that if you can, but it's probably not as critical, but it's critical here because we don't have that stimulating exercise. And you should see that my reps are extremely slow and I'm making sure that those top bells are right in line with my ears. So they are very high up there. And Farbotnik mentions in the article itself that this should really be a lot less than what you would normally do if you were to press. So this is just 50 pounds. This is about half of what I do on standard dumbbell presses if I'm going really, really heavy. And the whole idea here is these reps are incredibly controlled. There's a pause at the bottom and they are in line with the ears. So your, your weight will be less, but the feeling on your chest will somewhat be greater. So it's very interesting. Now we come to the famous or rather infamous breathing squats. Now I don't say infamous because it is a bad exercise. Of course it's not. It's a fantastic exercise, but it is very tough, demanding, and the actual exercise itself, completing a set, can take upwards of a minute, if not longer. Now for this, we will only be doing 15 reps. For the first five, 
we will be taking in a single breath before each repetition. You should also notice these are ATG squats, so they are all the way down. Again, just like with the deep knee bends, hamstring to calf, no bouncing. Except on this one, you are not going on the balls of your feet. You are keeping your feet flat. So your feet should probably be a little bit wider than they would be on the deep knee bend. And you're squatting all the way down. So like I said, the first five reps, one breath. The second five, as you can see there, two breaths. And I'm exaggerating them. They don't have to quite be this exaggerated, but you do want to fill your lungs up. So two deep breaths. And then on the third set of five, you will be taking three breaths, which is what I'm doing here. So that is kind of the gist of the breathing squat. There's more nuanced features to it, and there's a ton of different variations. It's just crazy to think that some people could go well beyond 315 pounds on the breathing squat for 15 reps in this fashion, all the way down, full squat, below parallel, with that perpendicular back, you know, straight up and down with that much weight. I think that is incredible. And it really shows the strength of these old school athletes. They were incredible. And they knew how to get the most out of their natural potential. Because you've got to remember this is the natural age of bodybuilding. And this is one of the key staples in enhancing the rib cage and making a broader chest overall. Now it's the classic one-two punch of the breathing squat and the dumbbell pullover. Now for this variation of the dumbbell pullover, Farbotnik mentions it should be done on a mat on the floor, and you just want to barely touch the bell to the floor, back up, bring it over your chest, focus on the deep contraction and breathing, and stretch the chest on the bottom. So when, you're get, when you get to your full contraction, make sure to stretch the chest out, which I am doing there. And you want to have your arms as straight as possible. Mine are slightly bent. Mainly that's just because of room and how I'm used to doing pullovers. But as straight as possible will be best. And you should do it on the floor. But you can do it on a bench. Like I said, the routine overall is flexible. But this is that classic one-two punch to really help stimulate both the pecs and expand the rib cage by stretching out the cartilage inside your ribs to help build a broader rib cage and make you look fuller when you're flexing your muscles. The final breathing exercise of the final block is the deadlift. Now for video demonstration purposes, I'm doing very lightweight, of course, this is only 75 pounds, but I wanted to show you that it is real important in this variation of the deadlift to keep your form very strict to make sure your back is straight and that you are not rounding your back that you are going all the way down and touching the ground and that you're really focusing on breathing you're breathing in as you're going down and expelling that air going up and that is really the key because this is a breathing exercise first and foremost another thing if you do intend to go heavy a way to increase more muscular in, uh, use and, and increase the overall difficulty of the exercise is to use a small plate diameter. So something like a 25 pound Olympic plate on an Olympic bar, for example. Something that is smaller overall and more compact, reason being it will increase your range of motion, which will make the exercise more difficult. Definitely don't do sumo here. Of course, do conventional. You want to stimulate more muscles, not less. And that is the final breathing exercise. Now we will go on to the last of the chest exercises. The exercise you will superset with the deadlift and the final chest exercise overall is the side flying exercise, also known as the pec fly. Now this is pretty similar to the modern pec fly. One major difference being that you are bringing the bells a little bit above the shoulders in a similar vein to what we did with the supine press to help increase in this stretch. And you also want to have your arms only slightly bent here. So it is not a true bent arm fly, and it's also not a straight arm fly. You want your arms to just be bent 10 to 15 degrees above straight. And that's pretty much all. Focus on your breathing. Make sure to inhale and then exhale when you're going back up to the top. And reap the benefits of another fantastic exercise and exercise routine. 
And that's pretty much all I have for you all today. If you have any questions about the exercises in this video or the routine as a whole, or if you have any future video ideas, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. This is Forgotten Fitness, signing out. Bye-bye.